Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about fragrances. My name is Helena and today I'm going to recommend some fragrances that you can gift to your significant other on St. Valentine's Day or whatever kind of day. So, uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my content because it will help my channel grow a lot. Then leave a comment down below, maybe give me some suggestion of yours and also hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post a video. So anyway, let's get started! First of all, I have to say that if you want to gift a perfume to your significant other for whatever occasion, it is a bad idea. Just generally, I wouldn't recommend to do it because perfume is very personal and even if someone really likes certain notes, a certain kind of perfume can be tricky on some people's skin. So, uh, just give them a scarf, a ticket to their favorite band or singer, uh, I don't know, a bicycle, give them anything that is not a fragrance. But if you're still determined to buy them a fragrance, I have a guide for you. First of all, just ask them what they would like. Because if they are really passionate about perfumes, they would know what they would like. Or just ask them to go to a perfume shop in order for them to choose what they actually like. This could be a nice idea also to spend a Valentine day as a couple without necessarily saying, oh, I don't really know what to gift you. Just saying, I know that you like perfumes and so I would like to gift one to you, the one that you prefer without making any mistake. Anyway, this guide, <laughs> this video finally is about um, the alternatives to very popular perfume because if your significant other is part of the western population it's really probable that they will own at least one of those fragrances. And I will recommend fragrances that are in the same realm. I will try to avoid spot-on dupes. And I will stay in the designer and niche realm because you want to make a good gift. So, uh, let's get started with the, one of the most popular perfumes ever. I don't have any, well, I have, I think, one, one of those fragrances, actually, but I have it at home, and right now I am in the UK, so I will just insert images here and there. Anyway, one of the best sellers of perfumery ever in the last decade is La Vie est Belle by Lancôme. It is a powdery, a uh, gourmand fragrance. It is a fruit, flowery, very sweet fragrance. The main notes that you can smell are iris, which is a flower that is pretty powdery and generally very classy. A little bit uh, like, it smells a little bit like talc. Then there is praline, which is very sweet, very syrupy, very gourmandish. And finally we have Pear that gives everything a youthful and sweet kind of vibe. Now, the alternatives that I have for you are, first of all, Irresistible by Givenchy. It is more of a young fragrance. It's really uplifting, more of a um, summer, spring kind of fragrance. It's really light-hearted, it has pear and rose and I think some sweet notes because it is pretty sweet but not seekingly sweet. It is not syrupy as the original La Vie est Belle but it's still really 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 nice and also if your uh, significant other is really girly and really loves pink the bottle is also very 
feminine. I don't particularly like it. I find it a little bit understated, but still it's a nice bottle. It's from Givenchy, so it's a good brand. So I would recommend this. Then if your uh, person is more of a lady, is more uh, refined, she has a certain classical bon ton kind of taste in the way they dress. Uh, I would go for a really classical uh, timeless one which is Mon Guerlain by Guerlain. This is also a really good brand and it shares with La Vie Belle the same kind of vanilla, very sweet, almost syrupy base but pretty powdery also as well because um, I don't know there is a powderiness to Mon Guerlain which is very common in all Guerlain fragrance in all Guerlain fragrance <laughs> in all Guerlain fragrances which is also known as La Guerlinate Guerlain has always this kind of powdery note and background which is similar to the powderiness of La Vie Belle because the iris flower gives a powderiness to fragrances and so they share a lot of similarities but it is a little bit more uh, subdued it's more clean and this clean vibe is given by the note of lavender which is not only clean but is also a little bit more edgy because uh, lavender is a typical note of men fragrances or fragrances that are targeted targeted towards men today I'm not able to speak also my throat aches a little bit because I got the big C um, but yeah sometimes I will go a little bit ASMR even if I find it creepy just because my voice cannot be um, overused I'm sorry guys but I'm fighting for you and so yeah Mon Guerlain is very classical very bon ton I would absolutely suggest it as a an alternative to La Vie Belle then if you want to go more towards a sexy aggressive kind of style if you uh, if your person is a little bit I wouldn't say kinky because these fragrances are still in the mainstream realm but if your person is still I don't know like a little bit of a femme fatale or I don't know very a little bit more aggressive I would suggest trying La Belle and Scandale by Jean-Paul Gaultier. La Belle is mostly based on the pear and vanilla accord and pear is as I said a note from that you can find in La Vie Belle and Scandale is based on the honey note but it has a very very similar dry down to La Vie Belle but it's a little bit stronger a little bit more punchier and also I would recommend Flower Bomb. Flower Bomb is very similar in the dry down to La Vie Belle. It's a little bit sweeter, a little bit sexier and a little bit raunchier. So if your significant other has this kind of sexy vibe around them but they still like being very feminine, very um, fashionable and very aggressive also I would recommend one of those three which are as I said uh, La Belle and Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier there are also a lot of flankers of those and Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf then another great bestseller is Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent I know it's not fashionable to like these fragrances but still they are one of the best sellers in the market so it's very very probable that your significant other will have one of those and why do not try something different or something with a different vibe and make them discover something that they may like as well so 
An alternative to black opium would be for me La Nuit Trésor by Lancôme, which I have here. I really like it. I also don't mind La Nuit. I also don't mind black opium. Uh, La Vie Belle, it's a little bit too syrupy for me, but black opium, I like it. The problem for me is that it's very white flower forward for my nose. For a lot of people, it's not. Anyway, black opium is this kind of um, coffee and milk, very vanilla -y kind of fragrance, which has also white flowers in the base or in the middle, I'm not sure, in the heart. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I really smell a lot of the white flowers also in the flankers and I don't like it so much. Uh, La Nuit Trésor by Lancôme, on the other hand, it is uh, more round, more gourmand. It has a fruity note, but I wouldn't describe it as fruity. I would describe it more as a praline kind of fragrance, almost chocolatey, which is, which, yeah, the sweetness of it, it's broken down by rose and lychee slash strawberry accord, but lychee, rose, strawberry are not prevalent in it. What I smell most of all is this praline chocolatey kind of note, which is absolutely lovely, which is so sexy, so enveloping, almost embracing. And also I received so many compliments with this fragrance and I never received compliments or at least uh, it's very rare for me to receive compliments, but every single time I wear this one, I will receive a compliment from my boyfriend. It, it is actually one of the few, few, few fragrances that he actually enjoys and also from strangers or from friends. So yeah. Definitely, definitely try La Nuit Trésor. They will love it. Most people, I think that 95% of people will actually like, at least like La Nuit Trésor and not find it offensive. So try this instead of black opium. Or uh, if your significant other is uh, a little bit on the younger side or doesn't mind tacky bottles, even if I don't find this bottle particularly tacky, I would suggest trying Wanted Girl by Azaro. It is also very good if you're on a budget because it doesn't cost as much as other designer fragrances. It has this kind of bottle which resembles a hand grenade and instead of coffee and milk, it has Dulce de Leche, which is still a lactonic accord, which means it's milky, but it's a little bit uh, more gourmand, more sweet, more almost buttery. I really like it. It's very sexy, very sweet, very syrupy, and I find it very reminiscent of uh, black opium. So give it a try, but if your significant other it's really um, one of those people who is always on point, very minimal in their makeup, in their uh, jewelry, in their clothes. Uh, I wouldn't go for Wanted Girl because the bottle can actually be a little bit of a punch in an eye for some people. I find it absolutely adorable. And then also this is for the very aggressive, still the panther kind of woman. I would suggest Black Excess from Paco Rabanne. Yes, Black Excess. Uh, the one with the snake around the bottle. It is very sexy. Also, if your significant other likes salty fragrances such as Olympia or um, vanilla vibes from Julia Tezegan, they will actually enjoy Black Excess because the, it has kind of a popcorn note which uh, is a little bit salty and mixes very well with the kind of syrupness that is very similar to the Black Opium one. So 
try black excess from Paco Rabanne if if your significant other has this kind of rawr, kind of vibe. Uh, yeah. Then our third bestseller is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. A lot of women have it. I also have it at home and I really enjoy it. It was my signature fragrance for a decade at least. It is a very patchouli forward kind of fragrance but the patchouli is mixed with uh, orange so it makes it cleaner and patchouli tends to be this kind of dirty earthy kind of scent and the the orange in it the citruses in it makes it a little bit uh, more light-hearted a little bit cleaner and a little bit warmer also and also there are a bunch of flowers in it that support the composition and makes it also a little bit uh, more refined and give it the classical Chanel Bon Ton vibe. For the people who enjoy Coco Mademoiselle, I would recommend uh, something in the same house, which is Coco Noir. Coco Noir is very, very similar to Coco Mademoiselle, but it's a little bit darker, a little bit punchier, a little bit um, more mature, but not mature in a way that is vintage, just mature in a more ladylike way. So I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for women below 25 years old, but it's really, really nice and it's very, very reminiscent of Coco Mademoiselle and it's still a Chanel. So if you're significant other really enjoys the brand or is really into this kind of very um, high-hand stuff, they will absolutely love it and it will figure pretty well on their perfume tray. Otherwise, I would suggest Angel EDT by Mugla. This is probably most for the younger kind of girls uh, who wear Coco Mademoiselle. It has a very kind of subtle and transparent almost uh, kind of patchouli like the original Angel, the EDP, but it's lighter, as I said, it's transparent and it's fruity. I think that there are red fruits in it that makes it very, very adorable, absolutely lovable and uplifting. So it's that kind of patchouli which is not weighted down. It's really light-hearted, very uplifting and a little bit sexy because it's still sweet. It has that sweetness that Angel has, but with that note of patchouli. And generally also people who don't necessarily enjoy patchouli because they find it a little bit too animalic tend to really like Angel the EDT. So try it out. And finally, a mix between Coco Mademoiselle and Angel EDT would be Diamant by Fragonard. And Fragonard is, as I already said in some of my videos, this kind of uh, fragrance house, which is a niche one and produces its fragrances in Grasse, which is the mecca of perfumes. It's a really good niche house, but it's still very affordable. And the presentation of the bottles is generally very beautiful, adorable. And so yeah, definitely if your person likes something a little bit more unique that nobody has, I would recommend trying Diamant because it's niche, but it's affordable and it makes a nice gift to give to anyone. And it has the best of Coco Mademoiselle and Angel EDT. So it's a younger version of Coco Mademoiselle or a more mature version of Angel EDT by Mugler. So try it out. Then another very popular one that I actually don't like is Armani C. 
Armani C for most people smells like wine. I don't get it. I'm Italian. I've been drinking wine since I was a kid because we do like it in Italy. <laughs> yeah, it was like this this much of wine once in a while, like during weddings. But yeah, and I can assure you that there is no wine smelling like Armani C. In my opinion, Armani C smells like Ace juice. You know, the vitaminic kind of juice that you give to kids to make them grow better? That kind of juice. And I don't, I don't know, it's not bad. Even if the cloud around people has something that to my nose it's pretty sharp, I don't know exactly what. But to me it's ah, meh. But if your person wears their money C, what can you buy to them? I would suggest going for uh, a niche brand, which is Parfum de Marly, and trying Meliora, which has still this kind of fruity vibe. And the fruity vibe in Armani C is given by the black, cur black current note. And in Meliora, you have a bunch of red fruits. And if Meliora by Parfum de Marly, it's a little bit too expensive for you, but you uh, have smelled it and you like it, I would try Amethyst by Lalique, which is really, really, really similar to it. And it's also really nice. The bottle is nice, but it's more affordable. And Lalique is a brand that produces glass so their bottles tend to be very curated, very nice, and also their fragrances tend to be pretty unique, pretty nice, and so try Lalique. Oh, and also I would try La Nuit Trésor à la Folie, or some, uh, the plank, uh, the one with the uh, lace details on the bottle. It's also pretty fruity. Something that is fruity and rosy at the same time, but Pralini, a little bit sweet, with a little bit of that kind of designery patchouli in it. I would try that one because um, it really is a little bit more fruity than this this Lanui Trésor, it, and it gives me at least the vibes of Armani C. And also Lanui Trésor fragrances are all very well made. Are all generally likable so it's really difficult for people to dislike uh, La Nuit Trésor fragrances and all Lancome fragrances are very good they're projecting they last long and they have a good sillage which is the tray that you leave behind when you walk so try La Nuit Trésor à la folie and also the bottle is really nice to have on your perfume tray then the one that is really, 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 really light where I live and I can smell it on every other woman is Narciso for her by Narciso Rodriguez. I, I don't like it. I don't know. First of all, I don't like the idea of it because it doesn't go in any direction in particular. It's musky, but it's not like super clean. I find it a little bit animalic, actually. I find that it has some kind of an animalic sharp note that makes me go like, oh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it doesn't want to go in any particular direction. To my nose, it's a little bit offensive, but most people like it. So if your person wears Narciso Rodriguez, like probably the 50% of the female population in Italy, I would suggest staying in the same house and trying Masque Noir Rose by Narciso Rodriguez, which I actually own because I really like it. And it has some vibes of the original Narciso Rodriguez, but it's a little bit sexier. It's a little bit sweeter without going towards the syrupy sweetness that we found in La Vie Belle, Black Opium and all that bunch of fragrances. It is still very transparent, uplifting, but it has that kind of very sexy feminine sweetness. 
and so yeah it's a very well loved fragrance it's pretty recent i think that it came out in 2022 and so yeah definitely try this one because i think that it's really difficult to not like it my other two suggestions are in the niche realm and the first one is peregrina by tamin and it is a rose fragrance with uh, some musk uh, in the base, I think. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's very refined, very feminine, very beautiful. And it is, in my opinion, a little bit reminiscent of Narciso for her, but less offensive, at least for my nose. It's less offensive and I actually like wearing it. Um, so try it and also it will you will look like a superhero because it is such a beautiful niche expensive fragrance and another one that I would try but can be a little bit tricky so I would recommend going to the shop with your significant other to try it is Experimentum Crucis by Eta Libre d'Orange it has a very very beautiful bottle and it's a really really beautiful fragrance it is extremely reminiscent of Narciso for her but it has a spiciness in the base that makes it a little bit more Middle Eastern in my opinion it has a Middle Eastern vibe which is given by the cumin note and I am one of those people who tends to smell cumin a little bit like has body odor. But in this case, I don't smell it like this. I smell it like as a powdery spiciness in the base, which is absolutely beautiful and exotic if you're Western, of course. And but I would give it a try on the skin of your significant other because it can become animalic and smell like body odor so or sweat if you prefer so give it a try it's a tricky one but if it fits your person tasters you will hit jackpot and anyway if it if your significant other doesn't like it and you go to a niche shop, you can always opt for Peregrina by Tamin, which is generally very likable. Now, the last two very popular fragrances are a little bit different from the ones that I talked about until now, but because the ones that I talked about um, are a little bit more wearable day to day, while the these two last ones are more of a wintry or even night kind of fragrances, but a lot of people wear it all day long. There is one of my boyfriend's friends who always wear this first fragrance that I'm going to talk about, which is very, very, very heavy, but she just prays the, the minimum and she's good to go. Thank God, because this is a very heavy fragrance. And the first one is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. Hypnotic Poison is a vanilla, almond, jasmine kind of punch in the throat. And for me, it's really overwhelming. I cannot stand it. I recognize the quality behind it. And I can stand fragrances that are similar to it. But the original Dior de Toilette is so freaking strong and it gets to my stomach so easily that I cannot smell it even from the Mouillette. It's too strong for me. Anyway, for people who love uh, Hypnotic Poison, I would recommend a niche one which is Mmm by Juliette Hazegan which is very, very, very similar to Hypnotic Poison, but uh, I can wear it, actually, because it's a little bit more powdery 
and also a little bit fruitier because it has raspberry in it and it's still a niche fragrance house it is very edgy it's really playful in my opinion i'm not a particular fan of their bottoms they remind me uh, of shower gel kind of bottles like fancy or even girly kind of shower gel bottles and they look kind of plasticky even if they are in glass they look kind of plasticky for me but it's just my opinion but they're still niche they are very high quality and I would suggest trying mmm because it's really delicious but a little bit less punchy than a hypnotic poison. Then another one that I would suggest is um, a little bit less expensive and it's actually in the cheaper realm for the people who don't have a huge budget to spend but it's still really really nice and reminiscent of hypnotic poison and it's um, Bouquet d'Oro by L'Herbolario Lodi and it is very sexy it has kind of almost a uh, licorice licorice li licorice 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 kind of note <laughs> i think that you pronounce it licorice yeah kind of note it's really um sexy a little bit edgy it's really really nice and a little bit powdery and it's really affordable but still makes a statement and it's still really uh the bottle is still very lovely you can buy uh, the perfume with the shower gel and the body lotion also if you think that just the perfume it's a little bit underwhelming and so I would suggest going for Bouquet d'Oro by L'Herbolario Lodi if you are on a budget but you still want to give a perfume and then I would try L'Amour by Kenzo, which is still very similar. It has very similar vibes to Hypnotic Poison in kind of sweetness and vanilla vibes, but it has rice powder in the notes, I think, that makes it a little bit lighter, a little bit fluffier, and also it is a little bit soapier. In my opinion and you can wear it at home without getting choked and without choking other people it's really really nice it's really really lovely I don't necessarily like the bottle even in this case but for some people it can look like some kind of modern art designer piece so try it definitely it's also in the cheaper side of designer fragrances and finally um, if your significant other really likes also syrupy fragrances and almondy fragrance fragrances and their favorite note in hypnotic poison is almond and you know that maybe they use some kind of almond body lotion or almond shampoo conditioner mask for the hair and so on i would try girl of now by elisa now this one people love it people hate it it's extremely 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 sweet it's very syrupy it's very very almond forward you can definitely smell the almond very very much but it's still a little bit lightened by the presence of orange blossom in it and i think it's lovely it's still very sexy it's not juvenile in my opinion just because it has girl in the name it doesn't mean that it's juvenile but it can be tricky to just separate it from the name but in my opinion it's beautiful the bottle i really like it's almost like art deco it's really 
I don't know, I really like the bottle anyway, and I own it actually. And in my opinion, the almond is very, very similar to the one from Hypnotic Poison. And I don't mind it because in my opinion, what really bothers me is uh, the vanilla with the almond with that kind of heavy jasmine, heavy sambac jasmine in the base. But no one cares about it. Anyway, Girl of Now is still really, really a good choice for people who love that kind of enveloping strong sweetness it's, it lasts forever it lasts forever on the clothes on the skin on the hair everywhere it lasts forever it's strong it projects like crazy and it doesn't cost a lot also i would suggest going on notino but guys for every single fragrance i'm talking about in this video i recommend going out to a shop and smelling it because if you buy it for your significant other, they will wear it around you and you will smell it all the time. So be sure that you like it as well. And of course, if it's a little bit tricky, just take them with you in order for them to actually tell you if they like your choice or not. So let's continue with our last best-selling fragrance which is alien by mugla so alien is this very outwardly super heavy kind of jasmine sambac which is pretty indolic it means that it's a little bit animalic a little bit dirty and almost i don't know almost like rotten smelling and that is what indolic means that something almost a flower almost smells rotten but people tend to really really enjoy it and some people are more sensitive to indolic flowers some people are less sensitive and actually really enjoy wearing them and um alien is one of these fragrances now i could recommend you a lot of dupes from niche houses there is uh, I think Glamour from M. Mikalev, Rouge Malakit by Armani, uh, Armani Privé, of course, of course. Uh, then there is Addictive Vibration by Nisho Parfums. There are a few um, very similar perfumes, but I will recommend something that is a little bit different. And the first fragrance that I would recommend is the only one intense by Dolce and Gabbana. Dolce and Gabbana it's a designer brand that is still I wouldn't say super affordable but more in the affordable realm instead of I don't know if Saint Laurent, Dior, Chanel. So it's still manageable to buy a Dolce and Gabbana fragrance and the only one intense guys not the only one classic the, the original the only one intense the one with the black bottle it's very white flower forward it is a kind of jasmine tuberose kind of fragrance and it's the kind of jasmine very refined jasmine that you can find in rouge malakite by armani privé but it's mixed with coconut and a sweet note of coconut almost in my opinion ambretti kind of coconut that makes it a lot more wearable and a lot younger and more crowd pleasing for a lot of people who maybe don't necessarily like wet flowers so uh, it is a very sexy edgy kind of fragrance and also the bottle is really nice to display on your perfume tray so yeah i would actually recommend trying that out dolce and gabbana the only one in tons another really nice flanker uh, is l'interdit rouge by givenchy l'interdit rouge is a white flower incense spicy kind of of fragrance you can smell a little bit of ginger a little bit i don't know i smell a little bit of incense it's kind of a little bit um 
not oriental, Middle Eastern. It has a kind of Middle Eastern vibe. It has this kind of tuberose that could be bubble gummy like in the original Anterdi or the, in Lanterdi Antans, which is also very good. I would suggest trying that one, but it is very bubble gummy and not necessarily um, as dry as Alien. Why Lanterdi Rouge? It's drier, it's spicier, it's more flowery but with a kind of Middle Eastern touch like the original Alien which has amber and witty notes in the base. So absolutely try Lanterdi Rouge and maybe give a sniff to Lanterdi Intense because that is also really nice. It has uh, sesame seeds in it and I love it. It's more vanillic, more bubblegummy, but still very edgy, very, mm, very punchy. So give it a try, but also go for l'interdit rouge because it is a safer choice, in my opinion, for people who enjoy Alien by Mugler. Another designer one would be Crystal Noir by Versace. Now, Crystal Noir is more of a sandalwood, white flower, clean, sexy, coconutty, dark one. It's really tricky to describe Crystal Noir. I don't smell really coconut, I'm sorry. I smell maybe a little bit of a sandal lotion during summer, but during winter I don't smell it. it, it goes away. I just smell this kind of woody, uh, but very clean base which is given by the sandalwood and this kind of clean, almost austere and dark kind of white flowers. And I really enjoy it. It's almost lactonic, but lactonic in a dark, clean way, if it makes sense. It's almost a cold kind of fragrance. Um, you have to smell it to understand if it would be okay for your significant other and for yourself. Well, you have to smell like all fragrances that I'm talking about, but it is a really nice choice and most people who enjoy Alien tend to also really like Cristal Noir by Versace and it's also in more the really affordable uh, designer kind of realm. So give it a try. And finally, if you want to try something more in the niche realm, but which is not the usual dupes for Alien, I would go for Tuberous, Tuberous Imperial by BDK or BDK, because it is this kind of, it's a bubblegummy tuberose, but it's still really feminine, really uh, austere, but still a little bit playful, a little bit girly. It's not super reggy necessarily, but it's really, really nice. Or even I would try going for Narcotic V by Nasomato because it is a very... Um, it is the white flower. It's very feminine, very sexy. It's the fragrance that in my Wednesday Adams video I gave to Debbie because yeah, it's the kind of black widow which wears all pastels, which is still, I don't know, very feminine, but still very edgy and almost a little bit out of mind kind of woman, kind of femme fatale. So Narcotic Venus by Nasomato or um, Tuberous Imperial by BDK would be great, great choices, guy. I couldn't recommend them enough. And they are also in the more affordable kind of niche realm. And of course, Narcotic V as this kind of tiny 30 ml bottle, but it's very, very concentrated. It's very strong and you don't really need to spray a lot of it. And it's also really, really iconic. So go for those fragrances. So guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed my content. I hope it was useful. 
tell me in the comments down below if you have any questions if you want any suggestions maybe your significant other doesn't wear any of those fragrances but you still would like to wear to buy them something that it's similar i have a lot of options to give you so consider subscribing really it would mean the word to me if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell down below so you won't lose any of my videos and maybe hit the like button if you like my content maybe hit the dislike button if you didn't like and so thank you for watching and we'll i'll see you in the next video bye